Peter Garrett, welcome to the programme. Hi, Sarah. So you've been on an epic final tour around the world. How does it feel now? What are the emotions for Midnight Oil coming to the end of a very long road? Uh, mixed emotions, Sarah, I think is the truth of it. Um, part exhilaration, part a sense of, well, we're saying goodbye to something that's been very special. I mean, it's an overused word, the journey, but ours surely has been one. Uh, has to come to some conclusion at some point in time when we still feel really strongly and good about what we're doing. So we think we've got the timing sort of right. Uh, obviously, we'll miss it a great deal, but, yeah, we're having a great time on the way out. You're in Broken Hill near the Mundy Mundy Plains, which is close to where the famous clip Beds Are Burning was filmed. What is it about that place? What's so special about it? Uh, look, it's big sky country, Sarah. Um, it's got a really strong landscape that's almost singing to you from dusk to dawn. You've got the presence of people who have walked on country for millennia. So, I mean, this is the, the entrance point to the outback in some ways. So, yeah, there's a ton of atmos out here and you're right. It was a place that we found ourselves at some years ago now when we did the Beds of Burning film clip, a film clip which we really didn't think was necessarily <laughs> going to travel that far and subsequently did. And here we are again, in some ways, um, closing up that circle in our career. of course was a call for Australians to give back to Indigenous people what had been stolen from them. Decades on, we're looking at a referendum to establish a voice to the Parliament. How significant is that going to be for you and the band? Oh, I think it's really, really important to us. Uh, our early forays into Western Desert areas and Arnhem Land and playing to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities really shaped us uh, as musicians. But also, you know, as citizens learning something about the prehistory of this country. And when we came back from the big tour that we did uh, a couple of years ago, Global Tour of the Great Circle, the songs that tumbled out, part of those, of course, became a record called the Makarata Project, because we really felt that the Uluru Statement from the Heart deserved to be taken seriously, that a voice to Parliament was something which, uh, as a nation, we surely should be able to comprehend and succeed in doing, and that constitutional recognition for First Nations people, in a sense, is the next big step that we need to take in our maturity uh, in building a democracy which shows tolerance and respect to the people who are here first. Now, your famous album, your most famous album, let's just call it 10987, just for, just for brevity, um, it came out 40 years ago, and you're going to be doing several concerts where you play the whole album for the diehards, but there's a serious question attached to this, which is a common narrative is that that generation who rushed out and bought that album, they're the ones who failed the world on climate change. And I'm not including you and the band in that charge. But were you and your followers simply overwhelmed by the power of the fossil fuel lobby and the politicians aligned with it? Well, I think the whole world has been overpowered, no question. Uh, yeah, baby boomers have got something to answer for by experiencing pretty good standards of living in Western countries, I mean, uh, and yet letting climate run unabated. We all bear some responsibility, but most importantly, our banks, our financial institutions, our regulators, and our governments bear the responsibilities. They are the ones that have the power, and they needed to have stood up to that fossil fuel industry, as we must do now. We just need to get on with it. We haven't got much time. I want to talk about the track Rising Seas, uh, the very first track on Resist, your final album. It begins with a very beautiful kind of lullaby, an apology to today's children, a kind of confession. Uh, you say, we did not act with serious urgency on global warming. We have to look you in the eyes and say, we sold you cheap. So do you think that things are changing now or not enough to change the sentiment of that song? Well, I think when Jimmy brought that song in and we were sort of sitting around with all the different tunes we had, it struck such a chord with us just as adults in our 60s and thinking about our kids and, and grandkids. The short answer to the question is that it's a race against time. We need to move very quickly, but it still can be done.
How special is it performing outside? Playing outside is great for this band, but there's something about the sound of the oils at full tilt just moving through the air, which, I mean, I'm on the stage and I absolutely love it. You know, it's the sort of thing that really gets me going, but I feel that it's a way of communicating what we're doing where there's no filters, no distractions, nothing's bouncing off walls or stadiums or clubs, the lights aren't flashing. It's, it's a very pure experience and yeah, it's a nice way to hear the band. Finally, Peter, can you imagine how you're all gonna be feeling at that very last concert in October? Because I think a lot of people will be saying if they listen to your last album to resist that you've still got a lot to say. Is that gonna be sadness mixed with relief? What is gonna be the feeling on that very last concert? I don't think we really know. I think that we're just enjoying making every show the very best that we can. We're enjoying playing together. We've got, you know, 45 years worth of songs and experiences and, you know, going from the clubs and pubs of Sydney and Melbourne and different parts of this country around the world and back again. None of us could have ever foreseen, uh, A, that we would have been able to play for this long and B, that we would have been able to play in so many places to so many people. So when we get to that final moment, uh, yeah, look, it'll be emotional, it'll be big and it'll have weight to it. But I also think we'll probably have a great feeling of gratitude to have been enabled to do this thing, which is so special. And I'm sure that even once we sort of pull the curtain down on oils touring in this way, uh, that of each, each of us in our different ways, and maybe even together we'll go off to make music in different parts of the world, in different parts of Sydney, Australia, who knows what'll happen. There'll be more music to come. It'll just be in a different form and in different places. You said gratitude. Well, from us, from your fans everywhere, gratitude back at you. Thank you very much, Peter Garrett. Well, thank you, Sarah. Thanks.